Notorious serial killer Levi Belfield is attempting to sue the government over a blanket ban on pictures being taken at his prison wedding. No, not April Fool's Day. Genuine news story. The 55-year-old was granted the right to wed a besotted jail visitor earlier this year, threatening legal action against attempts to stop the marriage under human rights law. Belfield currently serves two whole life sentences for the murder of 13-year-old Millie Dowler, Marsha McDonnell, Amelie Delagrange and the attempted murder of Kate Sheedy. Joining me now is Colin Sutton, the former senior investigating officer at the Met Police and the man who famously caught murderer Levi Belfield. Colin, thank you very, very much. Is Levi Belfield always on the wind-up? Yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it. I'm not even sure this wedding's going to happen. You know, um, I, I, I've 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 heard things to say that it's probably just all, as you say, a wind up. Uh, but I think what it does is it, it it kind of reinforces to us that we're in a situation, certainly that I've not seen in my lifetime, where the ability of people to go to the law and use the law is so wholly out of touch with public opinion across this mm. country. Nobody thinks it's a good idea to allow him to marry. <clears throat> Nobody thinks it's a good idea uh, for him to be able to insist on having photographs in prison taken, except maybe the lawyers who are, who are, who are getting the, uh, mm. the legal aid fund funding this. And also with what you've just been saying, let's not forget that he was in 2008, the first to my knowledge of the serial killers to decide that he was too much of a coward to come into the dock to hear his sentencing. Yeah, talk to me a bit more about that, because we are midway through a petition, which now, by the way, has more than 11,500 signatures. This petition started two and a half hours ago, so thank you, everybody. It's gbnews.com forward slash justice. And, Colin, what we are trying to do is have an update or a reinforcement into the law that forces vile criminals like Levi Belfield to come up to the dock to hear victim impact statements uh, and to have their sentences uh, said to them uh, directly. He is another example of somebody who swerved that, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, he was a, he was a coward to the last and, and, and remains so. Um, at the time, back in 2008, it was explained to me as being to do with maintaining the dignity of the court. And, and uh, you know, you don't want somebody disrupting the proceedings and, and making, you know, a theatre out of it for themselves. And then certainly somebody like Belfield would probably try to do that. Uh, and I understood that and I accepted that at the time. I think we've seen it so often in recent years mm. that there is now a danger that the dignity of the court is being valued beyond the ability for parents, victims, families, and those who have suffered at the hands of these people from seeing their justice being done. And I'm now firmly in the drag them in at all counts, cost. You know, costs can. So you would drag um, them in. You would. You would drag them in. Let me just drill down on that, Colin, because people are understandably, and I completely accept this, coming after me a bit on Twitter or in the inbox, saying, "Well, look, practically, how would you do this? What would you do? Would you drag them in?" I think I would. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I think I think I'm in that camp now. I think it is so important at the forefront and the forefront of our mind, and the, the absolute priority in all these sorts of cases must be the victims' families and those who are remain and who have got to deal with what these despicable people have done to their loved ones. And I think we should be valuing their feelings and doing what they want beyond anything else, certainly beyond the defendant's uh, feelings, do, uh, but also beyond the, the dignity of the court. Colin, what do we do? Do we, do we, do we shackle people? Do we gag them? Do we put them in a soundproof booth? Do we tie them to a chair? How do we do it? Because I want them in there. Mm. I want them to hear this stuff. I want them to front up to it. But I also don't want them swearing at the families, saying, I'm glad I did what I did. So, come on, how do we work that out? Yeah, it's difficult. I mean, let's face it, Levi Belfield swore at the families when the judge and jury were out during his trial that I was at. Uh, mm. You know, he, he called out all Delagrange's parents scum, mm. which is unbelievably, you know, ironic, yeah. given what he's done to them. Um, yeah, the, 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 there will need to be measures, and there may need to be, you know, disruption to proceedings and proceedings halted and... and, and you know, defendants brought back when when they've calmed down or, or when it's been instilled and they've got to behave. Or maybe, you know, that's their opportunity to... They get one chance and then they get taken away and then they can get what they want. But yeah. I just think that, you know, if, 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 if you're in the unfortunate position of having waited four years to see justice uh, served against the person who has turned your life upside down, then you deserve to see that justice done. 
Yeah, 100%. Look, Colin, thank you very, very much. I wish I could spend longer talking to you. We'll have to chat again at some point very soon. Actually, it's Colin, it's Colin Sutton there. Good stuff. Yeah. Colin Sutton there, former senior investigating officer at the Metropolitan Police. Look